today I have been given a very special access to Unifil's headquarters in Nakura. It's so little we know about it, so I'm very excited to see what I will discover. I'm entering now to the morning briefing. It's a ritual meeting that it happens every single day in the headquarters of Nakura. Come with me. What's the purpose of this uh, briefing? The aim is to give the force commander all the information related, related to, the informa to the operation. Mm -hmm. So uh, he will be briefed about the uh, activity of yesterday, the activities of the night, uh -huh. and the activity of, the, of today. Ah, okay. In that way, the force commander can uh, give the orders because he is well aware of all the operational situation. Ah, okay. When UNIFIL came here in 78, these four buildings were here already, and this is where the custom and the general security of the Lebanese government. Oh, you're gonna show yeah, me yeah. something? Yeah, you see, uh, this is an example of how was it before. You see, only one, two, three, four buildings. Exactly, these this, four buildings. Exactly, you see? Uh, okay. And it was empty here, you know, there was no roads, and we constructed all these. You know? mm -hmm. Yes. I will show you where, where the uh, first flag of United Nations was raised. Oh, it's interesting. Yeah. This is the, this is the, the place where I want to tell you about. This is uh, now is the Senate of. This is the flag here. Ah, you okay. see how big is it's it? It's in the same spot that it's, you have it's been It's still in the same nine... spot since 78. Okay. And all the other flags here are the troop contributing. Okay. From different countries. Okay. You see all these names here? Yes, there is. These are the many names names. of the uh, fallen peacekeepers uh, okay. in South Lebanon. Uh -huh. uh, here, oh. for example, you see the number one. Yes. The first fallen peacekeeper was 14 October 1978. Oh. And UNIFIL came here in 19 March. Mm -hmm. After the war, when UNIFIL expanded from 2000 to 12,000, yeah. uh, we were in the lower camp. You were there? Yes. And you uh, moved here? And then we expanded because we required to build uh, many workshops, many warehouses, many technical support installations like helipad which you see here, the hangars that you see yes. for helicopter. And we have approximately 1,000 civilians oh, really? working. Yes, 1,000. I didn't know that, yeah. And out of that 650 are uh, yeah. National staff, Lebanese, they are working communication, in information technology, finance, so, budget, so human they, resources. They are effective in the UNIFIL. Uh, yes, and, and they are very good. Actually, they are the backbone mm -hmm. of our workforce, mm -hmm. skilled workforce. But this is the heart from where we support all our activities mm -hmm. throughout Lebanon. Mm. Here where Lebanon. the decision is, ma is made. Decision and even the support activities like food, distribution mm -hmm. of food, fuel, distribution of fuel. We are burning 2 million liters of fuel a month. Mm -hmm. We are distributing, it's a lot. It's yeah. a lot. Because there are many vehicles yes. and many, many tests to Absolutely. do. Absolutely. We are distributing 80 containers of food, mm -hmm. 80 C containers of food every month and all is managed from here. But well, we're standing in the middle of one of our solar farms. Yes. Uh, we have five of these. And uh, these are solar panel arrays, which we use for producing uh, electricity. Ah, so we're trying to produce all the electricity from this to get energy. Is it enough for uh, the whole camp? Uh, no, no. We, we produce our electricity mainly using diesel generated power. Ah, uh, so it will help uh, to... Uh to getting energy, but it's not the only way. Exactly, exactly. Since when you get the idea to, uh, to build this? Uh, we began this in uh, late 2009. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, when we did our first installation, we really didn't have much to go on. There wasn't any similar installations in Lebanon. Uh -huh. uh, it's unique, so it's uh, We it's were a for sure step. the first on, uh, on this scale. Uh, but as soon as we began producing, uh, we discovered that uh, the amount of energy that we were getting was much higher than we expected. Ah, so, so it's, uh, it's effective? It's very effective. And, the wide uh, thing, what is uh, that? These are, uh, these are wind turbines. Ah, uh -huh, uh, but they are not turning. No, we're, we're just about to commission them. Uh, uh, this is okay. a new project for us. Uh, we have now a very good understanding of solar and what it can do. Yeah. So now we're moving on You're to... You're moving to wind. another... Exactly, uh, exactly. Mm -hmm. This one? Oh, what's that? I'm getting a spaghetti mixed with, uh, with the vegetables. They told me it's good. I'm gonna try. I have some potatoes. Thank you, thank you. Oh, I took the spaghetti, so I don't want to eat all pasta. 
I'm gonna start with the suit now, as she recommended. <laughs> and uh, at the time, yes. It's very rich. I always say it is very difficult to lose uh, weight in uh, Lebanon <laughs> because the food is so excellent. Yeah. And then, then you make sure. <laughs> yes, including uh, today, yes. <laughs> so make it. This is the, uh, the heavy workshop where we repair uh, the heavy machinery like bus, uh, trucks, uh, armored personnel carriers, mm -hmm. excavators, bulldozers. The building itself here is uh, the biggest one in the UN world. Uh -huh. It's 5,400 square meters. Mm -hmm. There's nowhere else we have this size and we're quite, uh, we're quite proud of it. Why did you do that in Lebanon? Uh, Lebanon is a, is a big mission and yes. as I said we have uh, more than 900 vehicles Yes. and we need the space and of course when we're going to build something we build it nice and properly. It's, it's uh, obvious yeah. it's so clean. Yes, we try to keep it clean. Yes. Yeah. This is inside the light vehicle workshop Okay. where we do uh, maintenance and repairs of uh, the light vehicles mm -hmm. like the jeeps, like the pickups you see here. Whatever they come in for the vehicles we do a full check on them. Mm. So we make sure that they are roadworthy and safe to drive when they go out back on the road again. We can see uh, there is many uh, employees uh, here. Yeah. What are their nationalities? The majority are Lebanese. Oh, really? Nationals, yeah. Oh, okay. So all the mechanics we have here, they are Lebanese uh, recruited. What do you do here exactly? I am the head of the accident section. I receive the tasks and distribute them among the employees. Mm -hmm. I evaluate the damages and follow up the investigations. Yes, the work and the employees. Okay, yes. So, Andrea, you are uh, only the spokesperson uh, to the UNIFIL or uh, do, you, do you do something else? No, I'm also, uh, which is actually related, in charge of yes. the Office of Public Information, oh, which okay. is an office of around uh, 20 people mm -hmm. and is an integrated office with a military side. We have military information officers. Yes. Plus, we also have uh, an integration with uh, the political section mm -hmm. and civil affairs. So it's not uh, one uh, uh, spe uh, specific uh, section? No. It's integrated with it's other It's integrated, section. which is very unique for uh, yes. any mission because uh, we are uh, working together with all these other sections. Coordinating Coordinating, which other. is really good for the flow of information and also to be kept well informed about mm -hmm. the situation on the ground, even to be better prepared to respond uh, to yeah. the media. Mm -hmm. Because the work of the spokesperson is not only to definitely to inform people, mm -hmm. to inform the media about uh, events, uh, but at the same time uh, to be able to inform them properly about on time news, about and about the news and about what's happening on the ground. The Office of Public Information, of course, is also dealing with uh, 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 public information of different natures. We have a video production, mm -hmm. we have a radio uh, unit. Oh, this is the place, uh, that's the place where, all where the everything are. happens. Ah, okay. Yeah? So that's the area where the videos are, are produced. And here we have uh, uh, our colleague Susan working. Hello. Uh, Hello. How are you? How are you? Welcome. Are you? Welcome. What are you working on? I'm editing now an episode of The Challenge. Oh, the oh, challenge series. Yes, the challenge. Oh, here can, I can see my colleague Farah Hamer who did one of the episodes. But with the Maritime Task Force? Yes, with the Brazilian contingent. Mm -hmm. Good morning. morning. Hi, Zena. Hi. Welcome. What are you doing? I'm recording the bi weekly Unifor Radio program Salam from the South. Why don't you record the promo? <laughs> Give me a level. Read, please. You are listening to the Unifor Radio program Salam from the South. Okay, here we go. Top Zena. You are listening to the Unifor Radio program Salam from the South. That was brought to you not by Zena. Not bad at all Islam. for the first time. I'm not an expert. <laughs> it wasn't bad actually. I, ca I think I can be uh, a radio representative for Unifor one day. Then are you ready? I am ready. Okay, ready for takeoff. Come on. Okay, must we know where you get? I'm so excited to uh, start our mission. Okay, Zena, welcome yes. in the Lebanese sky. Thank you. Okay, Zena, you remember we have yes. been in the old Italair this morning? Yes. Okay, you can see on your left now the old Italair. 
Yes, it's clearly obvious. You see how beautiful is your Lebanon, your land? Yes. Oh my God, the sea is very beautiful from here. How high we are? We are flying uh, 1,000 feet now. Okay. We are getting close to the blue line. Oh, okay. Where, where is the blue line? It's just in front of us. There? Okay. On top of the hill on your left, you can see Al Mashab. Yes. Zena. Yes. Do yes. you feel like an eagle? Yes, I feel like okay, an eagle. Okay, let's go. Under us, there's just water, no land under us. We are now over the sea, and we can see the south from here. Very beautiful view. I will descend a little bit. You can see Napura heliport now on your left. Yes. Zena, did you enjoy? Very much, I enjoy. Perfecto. <laughs> Madam, uh, 275, uh, one minute before landing in Apura. Thank you very much for your assistance. Goodbye. Ciao, oh. Thank you for this lo uh, very lovely trip. Tikrame. <laughs> Thank you very much. It was very. Did you enjoy? Very much. It was a very successful trip. It, it was my first, and I hope that it wouldn't be the last because it's very exciting. It will not. It will not. <laughs> okay, thank you. Inshallah, you say, yeah? Inshallah, yes. <laughs>